السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بنقسى uh, We apologize for the delay because we have technical problems again for the showing the slideshow for the second day. It seems that we have some problem with the technical problem with the computer. Anyway, today we'll talk about the herd immunity which we spoke about it yesterday in Arabic. And uh, why we talk about herd immunity as a new strategy because uh, this has been mentioned by many politicians uh, over the last few months from America, from uh, UK, from uh, Sudan and from others and most of the politicians are so scared to uh, leave uh, this problem of COVID actually uh, without actually uh, having a final solution for it. It's very badly affecting the economy of all the countries globally. That's why today we'll be talking about a herd community. Why we talk about herd community today, four months after the, or five months after we started to make the uh, lockdown of COVID-19. Because many people talked about the uh, another attack of COVID-19 in the autumn and the strategy and using the strategy of herd immunity which they are not going to uh, uh, make the lockdown and leave every one of us be responsible for his safety or her safety unfortunately so while we are talking about it, let me remind you of the update of the number of infected people on the globe is 14,935,635. This is up to today and the number of dead 616,338 uh, cases. That means over 4% died unfortunately. Uh, When I was reading one of the uh, article about uh, from Mayo Clinic, Mayo Clinic in America, it's mayoclinic.org June 6, 2020, about herd community and COVID-19, what you need to know, what you need to know about uh, herd immunity. It occurs when a large portion of the community, the herd, becomes immune to the disease, making the spread of disease from person to person unlikely. As a result, the whole community becomes protected, not just those who are immune. Often a percentage of population must be capable of getting a disease in order for it to spread. Yeah, that's what they are saying in the report in Mayo Clinic. This is called threshold proportion. But the threshold proportion is a percentage of a population must be capable of getting a disease in order for it to spread uh, if the proportion of the population that's immune to the disease is greater than the threshold the spread of the disease will decline this is known as herd immunity threshold another question we need to ask all of us what percentage of a community needs to be immune in order to achieve herd immunity? What percentage of community needs to be immune in order to achieve herd immunity? It varies from disease to disease. The more contagious disease, which is the more infectious disease is, the greater the proportion of the population that needs to be immune to the disease to stop the spread. For example, in the case of measles, measles is highly contagious uh, illness. It's estimated that 94% of the population must be immune to interrupt the change, to interrupt the change of transmission. So in, in, in measles, we need about 90% of the people to be immune against the disease before stopping the spread of the disease. 
Another question, how is herd immunity achieved? How can we achieve the herd immunity? There are two ways, or two paths of COVID-19. Either one, one through vaccines, which is not available at the moment, you will achieve this kind of herd immunity during, uh, 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 with the vaccine, which is not uh, uh, available at the moment. The second one, natural infection. When such a number of people in the population have recovered from a disease and have developed antibodies against the future infection. Either we have this big number of people who have been infected then they recover from the disease and they have the antibodies in their bodies or you have the vaccine and you have the vaccination from it. Another question, how can we slow the transmission of COVID-19. All this from the report of Mayo Clinic in, in June 6th, in, uh, in June 4th. Until a COVID-19 vaccine is developed, we cannot slow it down. It's crucial to slow the spread of COVID-19 virus and to protect the individuals at increased risk of severe illnesses, including older, older adults and people of any, of any age with underlying health condition. So the only way to slow down the transmission is through developing COVID-19 vaccine. COVID-19 vaccine. Let us go and talk about the politicians now. This is actually what Mayo Clinic mentions and I mentioned to you earlier at the beginning. Please, there is, uh, I think uh, Ali put uh, the presentation uh, on the link, the, the, the link of the presentation in, in, uh, uh, in the comments. What politicians and scientists talk about uh, herd immunity? All of us, we know what Boris Johnson mentioned in March about herd community and are going to be expect the loved ones, especially the elderly one, will unfortunately die from that. Herd immunity mentioned by him in uh, March uh, 2020 this year. But scientists are warning us against the strategic policy, strategic policy which will lead to an indebted, to be inundated, be inundated with number of patients that they cannot deal with. And if we do it, the scientists say that we might not be able to deal with the increased number of the people infected by uh, the disease. One of those scientists is Jeremy, is Jeremy Rossman from Kent University, who said, herd immunity might not be effective in COVID-19. Why? Because the virus keeps developing itself. Genetically, and in behavior. And the virus, according to Jeremy Rossman, keeps developing itself genetically and in behavior. That's why herd immunity might not be the successful way for us. Mark Woolhouse of Edinburgh University also said herd immunity will never stop the spread of a disease completely in population that have not developed immunity against it. That if we do not, if we have not developed immunity against the disease, herd uh, immunity will never stop the spread of the disease. Zhang Shan, Nan Shan, uh, Chinese pulmonologist, said also there is no scientific evidence to support the opinion of if a person, if person or a person or persons are infected, they cannot be infected again. Not once you are infected, you cannot be infected. That is actually, there is no proof for that. This is the argument between the politician and the scientists. In my view, there is another drawing, which uh, unfortunately I cannot show it because there's some technical problem here. There's, uh, I draw uh, four outside, outsider circles to show the philosophy of my thinking is based on belief, based on civil liberty, space, and freedom, based on no fear or horror policy, 
and based on optimism. So if we look at, the, at, the, at those four uh, uh, points of philosophical thinking in my uh, presentation, we should not, you know, we should look at them because we are going to be left alone if, held, if, if herd immunity policy and strategy will be left to us. That means that each one of us will be responsible for his or her safety and for his or her safety and his families and or her family. So these four philosophical principles believe. So I'm talking to anyone who believes in God, generally speaking. No matter who God is, we have to believe that God has decided already that we will die on a certain day. So we should not be afraid of death. This number one. We should demand for a, a civil liberty, space, and freedom. Well, this will enable us, enable us, enable us what? To be innovative in finding solution through the initiative that we can take to find such solution with our colleagues. Number four principle in my philosophy is no fear, no horror. Because fear and the horror, which has been made and created by politicians or by media or by wrong information on Facebook and others, social media platforms, will let us to be in a state of depression and withdrawal, and this will affect our immune system. On the contrary, that we have to be in a very optimistic way of trying to fight back this kind of climate which is surrounding us of fear and horror and death and infection. This is the philosophy of my discussion with you today. Since the uh, responsibility will be based on our response to deal with the herd community or the herd immunity philosophy or strategy, each one of us has to strengthen his defense mechanism against the infection itself. On three parts. Number one, we have to strengthen our immune system through, this will constitute about 25% of our struggle or our uh, uh, policy. Strengthening our immune system through taking good food, such as enough water, garlic, spinach, fish, cod liver oil, cod liver, uh, citrus fruits, apricot, almonds, walnuts, ginger, riddle, uh, carob, uh, turmeric, uh, vitamins A, B6, B12, C, D, E, red, red pepper, chicken, Broccoli, iron, copper, zinc, vegetable with high level fibers, green tea, sweet potato, berries, yogurt, sour milk, sunflower seeds, black seeds, black seed oil, uh, uh, rib seed, water, turnip, uh, kale, cheese, uh, home, homemade pickle, as well as others. So in our 25%, of our presentation is how to strengthen our immune, uh, immune system through taking good food. Second point here in, uh, in this, how to, to, to strengthen our immune system is body care. Body care through good rest, enough sleep, good exposure to sunshine, psychological comfort and well-being, Fasting, prayers, supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to your Lord. I'm not, sure, I'm not trying actually to tell you what to do. Yani sports activities, charitable activities. People might say, uh, we understand body care, uh, rest, uh, body rest, enough sleep, good exposure to sunshine. Uh, what is uh, fasting to do with, uh, with the immune system? Fasting cleansing cleans the body of the individual and morally, uh, spiritually strengthen the body itself. 
charitable activities putting you in a, sta in, in a status which will let you to be feeling that you are doing a worthwhile thing to help and save other people and this will put you in a very motivating uh, uh, status which help your immune system to be stronger charitable activity sports activity fasting prayer supplication good rest enough sleep good exposure to sunshine psychological comfort and well-being this is when we talk about how to increase the immune system for us to face alone the herd immunity philosophy of thinking or a strategy which might actually uh, affect us in autumn uh, winter uh, this year so 25 percent of our efforts should be spent on how to uh, strengthen our herd immunity uh, the second 25% which you call it uh, too much of a good thing is a bad thing too much of good thing is a bad thing bad thing never becomes good for you forever uh, too much of a good thing is a bad thing and bad thing never becomes good for you how to explain this too much of good thing is bad thing. This is another 25%. But 25% for the uh, how to break the immune system, system 25% is too much of good thing is a bad thing. First of, 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 of it is too much of taking food and drink. It affects the heart, it affects the liver, it affects the lung, it affects the spleen, it affects the digestive system as a whole, it affects the uh, the well-being of the body of the individual itself and it make a burden on all these organs to deal with the excessive amount of food and the drink that we are taking excessive and harsh sports activities such as boxing such as wrestling even rugby which is very physically uh, co uh, co contacting one another with it if excessive of these things will actually lead to injury, lead to exhaustion, and, and, and. Putting yourself and myself in the state of despair, anxiety, and stress, because this definitely will affect our immune system. Anxiety, stress, and despair. Try to get out of it. Try to be socializing with other people to stop yourself having to be in such a status of despair, anxiety, and stress. Also using tonics. Why excessive use of tonics? Uh, Red Bull, other things you buy from chemists, you buy from shops, and you keep mixing it with water, and give stenting the body of the arms, or the legs, or whatever you call it. Excessive using of tonics, anabolics, and doping drugs as well. This will actually affect the immune system of the body. Other point is psychological, mental, and neurological trauma. Don't expose yourself to such a trauma. Psychological, mental, and uh, uh, neurological trauma. Another one which is neglecting, treating, you neglect, treating some problems. You start to have a cough, then you start to have sputum, the sputum become green, you start to have uh, wheezing in the chest or noises in the chest and you don't take antibiotic and don't take rest and don't take the necessary uh, uh, medicine for it and this will affect the well-being of yourself and ourselves another one which is excessive sexual marital activities with your wife even this affects the, the body itself as, as I am saying that. Uh, number eight is excessive drinking tea and coffee because uh, uh, the caffeine has another negative impact on the well-being of the body of the individual such as yourself and myself. Moderation in everything. And this is what the Prophet وسلم, Muhammad وسلم, advised us to do when we eat. Make third for your food, third for your water, and third for 
your uh, the air is actually uh, you breathe into it the second point of the 25 percent of is bad things never become good for you so i said we said earlier on too much of a good thing is a bad thing the second is bad things never become good for you such as all different kinds of smoking never ever and you have to stop even if you tell me that i got this uh, hubbly bubbly with uh, with uh, what do you call it apple with uh, flavor with uh, uh, with uh, orange flavor with strawberry flavor all this smoke which is poisonous affecting the lungs badly no matter what you say young men and young uh, woman and what's one of my astonishment to see young girls and young women are having this hubbly bubbly and they smell uh, of, or, or awful smell like men so all different kinds of smoking we should stop using them inshallah this is bad thing never become good for you second one wrong and lawful activities which leads to hiv aids which hiv aids any activities which let you to be contracting hiv aids which is to decrease the immune system in 2017 there was actually uh, more than 770,000 people died of HIV AIDS and 1.7 million people uh, reported as infected. Sexual relationship with sex workers. And this is, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Young men, I saw them traveling here and there. Even last year, a very bad example, I saw young men coming from certain countries to Bosnia. Yani, yucky, what is this? Those individuals travel, travel, make the effort, spend the money. For what? For what? For something like this? And this is the young men? Oh, how silly. And when they contract HIV AIDS, their family and their mother and their father will spend the whole wealth on them to do that. Number four from the bad things is the drinking liquor. No matter what you say, you might say that beer is not like alcohol. All of them, as the Prophet said, ma kathiruhu yuskir qalilu haram. It is all haram no matter if you don't become drunk from a small uh, amount of it. See, so you can tell me beer is not, har is, not uh, is not haram, it has alcohol and this haram. Narcotic drugs and uh, taking drugs and narcotics and others. So bad thing never become good for you, such as all kinds of smoking, sexual relationship with sex workers, wrong and unlawful activities leading to HIV, AIDS, drinking liquor, taking drugs, and narcotics. This is the second 25% in my cake. If I my cake, the first 25% to strengthen your immune uh, system through good food and looking after your body. Second 25% is, is in, in my uh, uh, cake is too much of good thing is bad thing and uh, bad thing never become a good thing as I mentioned to you earlier in both sides. The last 50% is complementary program which you have to take it. If at this two, this first 55% is the 20, 50% is uh, to strengthen our immune system and too much of good thing is a bad thing for us. Complementary program will be first of all to follow following government guidelines should be all the time, no matter if you agree or disagree with the government, should follow the guidelines, social distances, uh, wearing masks, and other uh, uh, government regulation and guidelines. It's number one. Number two, cleanliness, self-cleanliness. Washing your hands, washing your, uh, when you go to toilet yourself, uh, having a proper shower, having, uh, washing your clothes, 
uh, and all this kind of clean, cleanliness that we have. Even I mentioned uh, a few months ago in March, I think, how we as Muslims clean ourselves during wudu, abolition, wing stinja, even wash, uh, shaving our uh, the hair from the armpit and the private area, and how to uh, cut the nails and others all as, as a matter of public health and public hygiene. This kind of cleanliness of the, uh, uh, the, the surrounding, uh, from the slums, from the rubbish, all these kind of things which will lead to uh, the presence of uh, insects, uh, uh, rats, and uh, all these sorts of things which uh, bring, bring uh, infection to us. Family bonding and cohesion. What the, somebody must say, what's family bonding to do with, 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 uh, with COVID? Family bonding create safety for the children, for the wife, for the husband. We should not see husband beating his wife, or wife screaming and, uh, and beating her husband, and the children screaming amongst both of them, or husband or wife, uh, and mother and father, actually are beating the children. The uncertainty and this kind of uh, uh, unsafe atmosphere in the family will make, uh, will lead to, will impact badly on the immune system of the individual. Of course, sports activity, if you can, do it if you can, if you, or if you are an old man or old woman, you can do the walking outside the house. Uh, government uh, regulation and education, awareness raising, and fighting illiteracy, illiteracy as well. A role of media. Why should the media keep surrounding us with false and negative and news? Please, 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 try to check the authenticity of the news that actually that you air on your media platforms, actually. Uh, uh, civil work and civil liberty and civil society organization, all the civil society organization that all the local organization have to be a part of building the social well-being of the individual and protecting the individual and guiding the individuals in partnership with the government as well. The role of social media as well, social mes messaging. Why young men and women on social media platform keep just spreading or sharing unauthentic information? Why? It's wrong. Should be uh, uh, sure that this news or this information are right and authentic before you start sharing it with others. Also, the role of research center, scientific research center, academia, and think tank, we should support them. Because we need to know the root causes of the problem. Scientific research, academia, and think tank. Religious institution, they should, because they are the most trusted institution in any country, whether the churches, synagogues, mosques, temples and others. They should play a very positive role, complementing the role of the government and complementing the role of civil society organization and the building the motivation atmosphere or the motivating atmosphere inside the heart of every citizen and sending very positive message to individual during this difficult time. Private sector has to deal with corporate social responsibility uh, supporting research, supporting civil society organization, supporting local community, supporting government program, and supporting individuals as well. This is actually the private sector. The last but not least, avoid excessive use of electronic devices because it has these electromagnetic waves which can affect uh, yourself and myself. So if I go back to my cake, I said in my cake of how to deal with uh, the herd immunity philosophy of thinking or strategy, I divided my cake into three parts. 25% to strengthening the immune system of my body through taking good food 
and through body care, as I mentioned earlier on. 25%, which is about too much of a good thing, is a bad thing. And bad thing never becomes good thing for you, such as excessive eating, drinking, sports, and, and others, as I mentioned before. And you find the link actually being shared by Ali in the, uh, in, 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 uh, on the Facebook, on the page. And bad things never become good things. It's a part of the second 25%, which is smoking. I'm just saying this, all kinds of smoking, uh, sexual relationship with sex workers, wrong and unlawful activities, uh, which lead to HIV AIDS, and drinking liquor, uh, drugs, uh, smoking, the dr taking drugs, and taking narcotics. Uh, the last 50%, which is a complementary system, which talk about cleanliness, sports, role of media, social media messaging, uh, the role of civil society organization, education, awareness raising, family bonding, uh, following government guidelines, and uh, role of research center, scientific research center, and think tanks and others, role of release institution, role of private sector, and avoid excessive use of electronic devices. Our statement at the bar, at the last is actually which is mentioned by one of my colleague, young individual, may Allah bless him. He said to me, the strategy of herd immunity gives us clear evidence that it will lead to a wider spread of the infection which will have a damaging snowball effect on society. Unfortunately. And this can through the politicians four months ago. And this might happen to us in autumn, uh, winter, uh, this year. So we have to be self-protecting ourselves, taking the responsibility of protecting ourselves, our wives, our children, our loved ones. The second point mentioned by Ahmed al-Sheikh is the rapidly spreading COVID-19 global infection proves what? That the infection was there for a longer period of time and was not recent infection as claimed previously. And this is something I believe in very strongly, that if people start talk about a pandemic in December, this pandemic must have started somewhere silently in August, September, October, November. So we nearly are under one year being attacked by COVID-19 over the last nearly one year. Not only six months, not only seven months, not only eight months. The other point is which we need to mention before I end my presentation is do we know the actual number of infected people globally, there are certain countries and many countries do not announce the number of infected people in their population. I don't want to mention such countries. Many countries in Africa and Asia do not disclose the number of infected people. And whenever anybody dies, they can say chest infection, they can say liver disease and other, other, other. So this is something actually to let us to be aware about the policy or the strategy of herd immunity, which uh, people, politicians are talking about to uh, follow the strategy of herd immunity uh, in this autumn. Let me make the definition of herd immunity again. It occurs when a large portion of community, the herd, becomes immune to the disease, making the spread of disease from person to person unlikely. As a result, the whole community becomes protected, not just those who are immune. Often a percentage of population must be capable of getting a disease in order for it to spread. This is what we call threshold, threshold proportion, was mentioned by Mayo Clinic org June 6, 2020. Thank you very much for uh, being with me and uh, my apology again for the technical problem happened to my computer and to the Wi-Fi in my house.
maybe next time we'll change the computer as well as we I cannot change <laughs> my house but I'll look at uh, how to deal with it but we'll share we'll share the presentation with you it should be uh, with the link that Ali will be putting it with the with with the with the film with the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.